This is how most Webflow sites look when the user increases their font size. Text overlaps other text and everything feels a bit muddied. If you're helping a client decide when it's time to redo their old Webflow site, this is a key factor to consider. The entire point of using rim font sizes is that it's based on the user's preferred font size. If we only wanted our font sizes to increase with browser zoom, we could use pixel font sizes, which do the same thing. But the entire point of using rims is that it's based on this size here. So the user sets their preferred size in browser settings, and then every website they visit from that point on using rims will be based on this preferred size without the user having to manually increase their browser zoom. Now, because Webflow breakpoints are set with pixels here, instead of it switching us to the next breakpoint when the user increases their size, it just keeps us on the desktop breakpoint indefinitely and things start to overflow. Now, there's a couple simple things we can do to fix this. Is And the first is anytime we have a horizontal flex box here, we usually want to enable wrapping so that instead of these elements kind of colliding into each other like they're doing here, it'll just wrap whenever we run out of space. Now this requires a mindset shift. Instead of going to the tablet breakpoint and changing the direction to vertical manually, we're letting the browser decide when to let these elements wrap. This is much better because if the user adds a new link to this list, it'll just automatically wrap before we run out of space instead of us having to determine that point ourselves. A similar class that we can use is called auto fit. And here we just apply a regular grid in Webflow, but we apply an auto fit setting to it. Every Webflow project that cares about accessibility should have this style. Basically, it allows us to set the minimum size for our columns, and before they get smaller than that, they'll just stack under each other. So how do you find out that minimum size? Well, usually I just set a width on this column here. So I might say at eight rim width, this link is wrapping and I don't want it quite to wrap. So I might give it a minimum width of nine rim, and that looks like everything fits nicely for the content and font sizes I have. So I'll just come up to this parent grid and I'll go ahead and switch it over to an auto fit grid. And then I'll set the minimum size of these columns to nine rim. So before we run out of space for these links here, they'll actually just stack under each other before overlapping each other. And this is great because if we ever decide to change our content later or our font size, and maybe now this link is too long, instead of having to go back to every single breakpoint and change where we set these columns to wrap, we can just update the new minimum column size we want for this grid. And by changing it in one place, the entire layout responds as needed. Now, this is great anytime we have evenly sized columns like we have here, but whenever we have inconsistent column sizes like this one's four and the other spans the remaining, we need to use a different approach. Usually this is where I would have reached for custom code, but there's actually another way we can solve this. So for this right column here, what I'll go ahead and do is figure out the minimum size I want this column to be. So I don't like how it was having three here. I want it to always be four and then wrap essentially. So I'll just in keep increasing this minimum size till I make sure I can fit four columns, which looks like 47 rim in this case. And then we'll go ahead and set our flex settings here to grow if possible. So it can get larger than that 47 rim if needed. So it fills all the remaining space. And because of this shrink one, it'll also shrink to be smaller than 47 rim. This 47 rim is just our ideal size where the layout will wrap before this column gets smaller than 47 rim. So on larger screen sizes, these columns are side by side. On smaller screen sizes, it'll wrap before this column gets any smaller than that. Now here for this left element here, we actually have column width variables in Lumos. So if you don't have column widths, you could set a rim size here. In this case, I could set this to always be three columns, to always be four columns. And this is just a regular sort of uh, div here. Now, when our layout does wrap, I still want this column to be able to fill all the remaining space. So what we can do here is give it a flex setting as well and set it to grow one so it can fill all that space whenever needed. But on larger screen sizes, we have these side by side. Now notice how this is no longer four columns exactly. And that's because it's set to grow if possible. This other one is also set to grow if possible and they're fighting for the remaining space. So this grow setting allows us to pass in how much of the remaining space do we want this element to occupy. And in this case, if I just pass in a very large number, I'll just make sure that it fills all of that remaining space altogether. And then this column will always only be its actual width. It'll never grow beyond that. 
unless the layout actually wraps. So now when it wraps, this content can expand like so. And you'll notice even within this content here, I've actually applied an auto fit grid. And the minimum column size here is large enough that these elements can't be side by side in this context. But in our mobile context, when we have more space, they can actually go side by side and create this two column layout. And then before we run out of space again, they'll stack under each other again like so. And our entire layout is responsive completely from the desktop breakpoint. Here we have a border width and a border radius set with pixels. And when we zoom in on our browser, notice how that border width and border radius is getting larger and everything's staying proportional. But if the user increases their font size, pixel values don't change. So the border width and border radius don't increase, and it starts to feel very thin compared to our other elements. Things just aren't scaling proportionally. So anywhere that we normally use pixels, we want to use rim instead. That includes for border width, that includes border radius, that includes things like drop shadow, basically anywhere that we would use pixels. And that way everything scales with the user's font size and stays proportional the same way it would if we zoomed our browser. Here our heading font size and our left and right padding inside our container are being reduced on each breakpoint with Webflow variables like so. Now on our published site, we can go ahead and zoom really large without this heading ever overflowing. And that's because we keep crossing into a new breakpoint, which reduces that padding and reduces the heading font size. So we can make this paragraph five times its original size without the heading ever overflowing. Now, if we try to do the same thing here in Webflow, notice that only two times the original size, the heading is already overflowing off the edge of the screen. And that's because we've never actually crossed into that next breakpoint. So this left and right padding just keeps getting larger indefinitely and same with our heading font size here. Now to fix this, we can use fluid sizes instead of breakpoint based sizes, which is the entire reason I've created the Fluid Builder app. So here I can go ahead and select any variable. I'll select my container padding and I'll leave it set to 48 uh, pixels, which is uh, three rim like it was on desktop, scaling down to one rim like it was on mobile. And we'll go ahead and set our heading font size to be kind of larger on desktop and a little bit smaller on mobile like so. And so now that we have that set, our responsive changes are gonna trigger right from desktop. So as we're increasing this, notice the padding isn't getting insanely large anymore because it's actually scaling with the screen and same for this heading font size. Now, sometimes we'll need a breakpoint that's based on the user's font size. And for that, we'll need custom code, but even then we can try and keep things as native as possible. So here we have a two column grid with our text and our image inside of it. And probably the easiest way to make this wrap is to change it to Flexbox. And we can preset how we want it styled, like maybe vertical here, so that the only thing our custom code has to do is switch from grid to flex and everything else is handled with a style panel. Now we might wanna create a variant for this where sometimes the text comes after the image. So we can go ahead and create a reversed variant and whenever our layout wraps, we want the text to go back to its normal position. So if we try and apply an order here, this also works inside Flexbox. So it wouldn't automatically go back to normal when we switch the parent to flex. What we'll do instead is use a grid setting that can only work in grid, like a grid column start that tells us which column we want this item to start on. We'll say start on the second column, which means this item needs to jump to the first column to fill up that empty space. And because this is a grid setting, it'll only work when the parent is a grid. So if we switch this parent to flex, notice how the text goes back up to the top. So really the only thing we need to change in our code is that display setting on this layout element. And we'll base that off the width of this entire container. We could use the section or any parent element, but we'll apply a container type inline size to it. And then all we need to do is add in an embed and we'll say when our container is smaller than 64M, we'll set our layout to a display of flex. That's the only thing we're changing. And so what we'll notice is I'll go ahead and attach my reversed variant here. Uh, when we increase our font size here and it wraps, all of the text goes to being on top of the image like so. And the only thing we had to change was that one display setting. Now, all of the Lumos components are built completely breakpointless and you can use these components for free. So I encourage you to dig into them and see different creative ways to create breakpointless layouts. I hope this tutorial helps you in your Webflow projects.